our text verse tonight is going to be verse 26 where Jacob said, I will not let thee go except you bless me. And our topic tonight is simply press into the blessing of the Lord. Press into the blessing of the Lord. Tonight, if you're like me, you may be a little surprised or off kilter that tonight at the first night of the first uh, jurisdictional women's convention, our title character is a male. It would seem as though I would come up here and preach about a woman. Uh, but I was just as shocked as you are when I sought the Lord and I checked with God and said, God, are you sure that this is our lesson tonight? But as I continued to pray and study, I realized that God has given us Jacob tonight for several reasons. For one thing, today in 2018, we are the daughters of the fulfillment of women's equality. We live in a day where we enjoy equal rights and opportunities under the law as men. For example, we are educated. We can work. We can own property. We can go into any field that we choose. We have a quality in that we have equal access and expect equal rewards. But Jacob reminds us tonight that even with the equal access and rewards, we also have a responsibility to the press. Today's women's movement concerns me because we have fostered a spirit of toxic femininity in our society. We have women who feel that we are entitled to rewards but exempt from responsibilities. And it's concerning, and I appreciate the movement toward equality, but I want to make sure that our movement toward equality does not undermine our society. We have created a society where a woman is entitled to be believed, no matter how far-fetched or unfounded her accusations may be, and men are never to be believed. We have created a society where a woman never lies and men always do. We have created a society where women are not to be held accountable, but men are. But we have to know that God does not live in this fairy tale land that we have created. The same God that held Adam and Eve responsible equally will also hold us responsible and holds us to press. And so as we press into the blessings of the Lord, we as the women of God must be sure that we are pressing into that which appertains to a woman. We must be sure that we are pressing into what God has for us. Because we live in a society where women are wishing themselves a happy Father's Day. We live in a society where women are taking the mantle of pastors and bishops. We live in a society where there is a blending of gender roles. But I want you to know that God created them male and female. And even though we have equality, there is something for me and there is something for the men. Somebody say hallelujah. It is important for us to know in the society that we have, where we have 80% of our households led by women, we must support those women. We must help those women. But we must also let the message in our community be clear that a woman can never be a father. And it is a very real concern that we seem to believe that we can be both mother and father. It concerns me that we're not concerned that there is not a headship of male in our homes. Let me say it to you like this. If I were to leave my family, my husband would fill in some gaps. He can make them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He can even try to plait Pam's hair. He can go to the PTF. He can help them with their homework, but he can never be me. 
because he's not a woman. And likewise, if he were to leave our family, I could take John to football practice. I could take him to the barber shop. I can teach him how to manage money, but I would never be him. So as we press today, it is important that we understand that one of the blessings that God wants us to press into uh, is the blessing of the establishment of the home. Am I saying anything? So we understand that God wants men and women to wrestle. As a matter of fact, Jacob wrestled, as we see in our text, but Rachel also wrestled. In fact, when Jacob met Rachel, she was tending to her father's sheep. In fact, in Genesis chapter 30, verse 8, she testified herself and said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, but I have prevailed. That word wrestle refers to torturous times and twists and turns and in and out and frankly unsavory moments where you have to just get ugly. And Rachel admitted that in the love triangle that was created, created between Rachel and Jacob and Leah, there were times that things got ugly. As a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 30, verse 14, Rachel discovered that Leah sent her son Reuben to collect mandrakes and bring them to her. Mandrakes are a plant that can be used in small doses, and in small doses, it's an aphrodisiac. But if you uh, uh, consume it directly, it is poison. And so it is very important, the Holy Ghost said, that we are to warn the women of God tonight that we have to get the mandrakes out of our houses. Because even though some of those things turn you on and make you feel good in the end, they will poison and destroy the purpose of God in our lives. Some of us, we need to sanctify our playlist. Some of us, we need to sanctify our TV shows. I know HBO just premiered, uh, what's the show, Insecure, but some of us, we don't need to sit home and watch Insecure. Our prayer life is not secure enough for us to watch Insecure. We can't handle strong sexual content over and over and over again. We can't handle that. Ah, uh, so we must understand that God is holding us accountable and that we must press. We must press against lesbianism. It seems to me that every other show with a black female character is going to feature something with lesbianism. The world is trying to sell that to us as an alternative lifestyle, but the devil is a liar. There's nothing that a woman can do for me but be my friend and bring me into the world. Other than that, there is nothing that a woman can do for me so we must press into sexual purity touch a neighbor and say me too me too me too me too hallelujah but another reason why God has given us Jacob tonight is because if there is any person who knows what it is to wrestle and to go through the twist and turns and struggles in the pursuit of a blessing, that person is Jacob. Jacob's life was filled with twist and turns and a lot of turmoil and a lot of mess, a lot of drama as he was in pursuit of the blessings of the Lord. And what is interesting is that the root cause of a lot of this is the fact that there was actually a word over Jacob's life. When Rebecca was pregnant with him in Genesis chapter 25, verse 23 and 28, we know that uh, Jacob was a twin. And Rachel and Rebecca sought the Lord to see what was going on in her womb. And God gave her to know that there are two nations inside of you and they are going to be divided. And what God said is that the elder would serve the younger. So the elder was Esau and the younger was Jacob. And instead of Rebecca just sitting back and letting God perform his 
his word, she had to get involved and help God perform his word. And so she involved Jacob in a lifestyle of trickery and plots and scheming, trying to make things happen. And it always resulted in a mess. I want you to know tonight that you do have to work to be blessed because faith without works is dead. But I also want you to know that you don't have to scheme. You don't have to plot. You don't have to tear anybody down. You don't have to sleep around. You don't have to steal, chill, and destroy to get what God has for you. Because Philippians 1 and 6 says, Be in confidence of this very thing, that he that begun a good work in you, will perform it how long until the day of Christ Jesus so if there's some things that haven't happened yet it's all right because he said he's gonna keep working on it until the day of Christ Jesus somebody say hallelujah but Jacob couldn't trust the process and so the Bible gives us to know that Jacob wrestled and schemed and plotted in Genesis chapter 25 he hijacked his brother Esau's birthright over a meal. How shady is that? In Genesis 27, he stole his brother's blessing from their father Isaac. The blessing was pronounced and it was in the form of a tangible gift and it was designated for the oldest son. Jacob was not the oldest. That was not for him. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter 27 that he lied to his father. He went to his father and lied and said that he was Esau and then the ugly part is that his mother I said his mother dressed him in goat skin so that they could deceive Isaac his mother dressed him in Esau's clothes his mother said don't worry about making the porridge I'll make it for you so we can get into Isaac before Esau came back his mother mother engaged him in all this trickery and I can't help but stop and take note today of the way she acted and women of God we must be clear that God has given us influence we know that God has given us authority but we have to use it in the right way we cannot allow Satan to pervert our influence and make us manipulative conniving control Controlling and a constant source of strife and contention in our homes, on our jobs, in our churches. The devil is a liar. And it's amazing to see that his mother did all of this to her son and she never took account for it. When it was all said and done, she told Jacob, you need to run until Esau is no longer angry about what you did. What he did? Don't you remember what you did? But as I look at this, uh, women of God, I can't help but think about uh, our sons. I can't help but think about black America. I can't help but think about the fact that our sons are failing academically. Our sons are overrepresented in prison and underrepresented in college. Our sons are the only creatures on earth who have made a cultural norm of wearing their pants off their behinds. Our sons have made a cultural norm of making music that is misogynistic and disrespectful to ourselves. They call us bees and hoes and chicken heads and some of everything else. And our sons are being turned out. Our sons are turning to perversion. Our sons are making babies and not raising them our sons are leaving girls in the hospital to have the baby all by herself our sons are doing this and what are we doing what are we
we saying? We're just like Rebecca. We're throwing stones and hiding our hands and pretending not to notice. But the devil is a liar. God is saying it's time for Rebecca to rise up. It's time for Rebecca to deal with her sons. It's time for us to tell our sons, you will not come in my house. No son of mine will listen to that hip hop music. No son of mine will disrespect another woman. I don't care if you don't like her. If you didn't like her, you shouldn't have slept with her. You will not put your feet under my table and have babies all over town. It is time for Rebecca to rise up. Jesus. So under the tutelage of his mother, Jacob received a blessing. Received a blessing that was not his. Verse 20, uh, in Ch Genesis chapter 27, verse 28, we see where Isaac pronounces the blessing on Jacob. Isaac said, therefore God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Listen to this. Let people serve thee and nations bow to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be everyone that blesseth thee. And not long after he pronounced the blessing, oh poor Esau came and saw what was going on. For his father to give him the tragic news in verse 33, he told him, I have pronounced the blessing on Jacob and yay he is blessed I can't reverse it I can't take it back and in verse 35 and 36 he goes on to explain that I've already given him the corn I've already given him the wine and all of the servants all of these things have I already given to him but he stole it uh, Jacob stole it he was wrestling for a blessing but he wrestled the wrong way. And later on, their mother and father sent him to Laban's house. And oh, when he got to Laban's house, he met his match. He fell in love with a girl named Rachel. And Laban said, yeah, you can get her for seven years of labor. And then when he went to get who he thought he wanted, there was Leah. And so Laban tricked him and said, well, I'll give it to her this time. Give me seven more years. And he gave him seven more years. And then after that, he wanted him to work seven more years. But Jacob spent all of this time there because his mother told him, you go to Laban's house and wait until Esau is no longer upset with you. And I will call you. I will fetch for you to come back. And so now Jacob is out away from his home and it's been 21 years and nobody has called him back. Nobody has reached out to him. Oh, I'm here to tell you tonight that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You can get ahead by scheming, conniving, gossiping, backbiting, sleeping around if you want to, but just know that you will reap what you sow but the good news is that you don't have to do any of that all you have to do is what Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 7 humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time I want you to know our God doesn't have a limp wrist our God doesn't have a weak hand but our God has a mighty hand and when he gets ready to exalt you Jacob can't stop you. Esau can't stop you. Nobody else can stop you. Why? Because you're hiding uh, under his hand. Uh, come on, if you serve a mighty God, touch three people and say, he's mighty, he's mighty, he's mighty. Oh, come on, somebody thought about that thing. We realize I don't have to 
blink and wink because I serve a mighty God. I serve a God who was strong and mighty. For we know that the enemy sometimes will make weapons to come against us. But when you serve the mighty God, you can relax because you know that the God you serve created the smith that blows the coils. The God you serve created the waster to destroy and he has already established that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. How many know that God is mighty? Mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to deliver. I don't have to pull you down because my God is mighty. So Jacob wrestled and schemed and plotted and got into a very messy situation. And he fought his way and schemed his way even out of Laban's house. And he wanted to go home, but he couldn't. So he concocted a scheme. He sent some messengers to Esau with a greeting of peace. And then he heard from the messengers that Esau was coming with 400 men. And this message terrified him. So he did what Jacob does. He prayed, but before he prayed, he concocted another plan. And in his plan, he divided his family into two groups. Divided his family into two groups. And he said, if the first group is destroyed, then the other group would survive. You know, when you're plotting and scheming, you're not even thinking right. Because how can you have one part of your family that's dispensable? And so that's what he did. And eventually, he sent his wives and his children over. And that brings us to our text in verse chapter 24 after he sent everybody over Jacob was left alone and the Bible says that he wrestled with a man and we know that Jacob knew that the man was God and he wrestled with him and the man dislocated his thigh and he asked Jacob to let him go because the day was breaking. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And it's very interesting to see this because we are seeing a different side of Jacob. Uh, because Jacob said to the angel, said to God, I will not let you go until you bless me. But we have to understand that Jacob was already a very blessed man. We just read that Jacob already got the birthright and he got the blessing from his father. He got Rachel. He got Leah. He had 12 sons. He had servants and plenty of corn and food. But what is interesting here is that Jacob was not following fighting for that kind of blessing. Jacob realized that he had fought for stuff and fought for position all of his life and that his life had turned into a complete and total wreck. So when he got into the face of God, he said, I wrestled with my daddy and I got what he had for me. I wrestled with Esau and I got his stuff. I wrestled with Laban and I got his stuff. He said, but now God, I am coming to you to get the blessing that only comes from you there is a difference between a blessing and the blessing what Jacob teaches us is that you can connive and get in the face of people and get a blessing you can lie and cheat and undercut and get a blessing we just saw it you can take your tithe money keep it in your pocket and save it and buy a blessing you can sell your soul to Hollywood and get a blessing but none of those blessings can compare to the blessing of the Lord for the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it I want to know if there are any people here tonight who can say I am in pursuit of the blessing of the Lord so Jacob wrestled with God realizing that all his life he wrestled with people to get what he wanted but Jacob said today I'm not here to wrestle for what I want but he said God I'm getting in your face to get what you have for me this is the first time that we see Jacob and Jacob has no agenda no plan no tricks up his sleeve no angle he didn't even ask 
God's the angel to help him with his brother who he thought was coming to kill him. He said, I don't know what I need, but all I know is that I need whatever you can give me. I wonder, are there any women here who would dare to put your agenda aside? Who would dare to put your bucket list aside? Who would dare to put your wish list aside and say, God, while I'm in your presence tonight, I'm not going to tell you how to bless me, but whatever you have for me, I want what you've got. If you have a blessing, I'll take it. If you have to break me, I'll take it. If you have the Holy Ghost, I'll take it. If you have a financial blessing, I'll take it. If you've got a husband, I'll take it. If you've got joy, I'll take it. Whatever you have, I want the blessing of the Lord. If that's you, give God some praise. Jacob was in a place where some of us have been before. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you've been so perplexed by the circumstances of life that when you prayed, you really didn't know what to ask God for. You were at your wit's end. I would ask you for this, but that won't help. I would ask you for that, but that probably won't help either. If that's you, raise your hands because God has selected you tonight. Because if that's where you are, you're in the perfect place to press into the blessings of the Lord. You're in the perfect place to say to God, not my will, but your will be done. To say to God, have your way. To say to God, whatever you have for me, I want it. If that's you, I dare you to lift your hands right now and say, God, have your way. God, have your way. Hallelujah. 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 We have got to. God, thank you. This is my box. This is my box. This is my box. Hallelujah. And this box represents our will, our plan, what we want God to do. And most of the time, when we come to church, we pray and we seek God and we ask God to come into our little box. God, we, I want you uh, to fix it like this. Uh, God, I want this blessing. Uh, God, I want that blessing. Uh, but doesn't it look crazy uh, that me and this big old man uh, are standing inside uh, of this little bitty box? Uh, God is saying to us tonight, uh, when you come to the women's convention, uh, I don't want you uh, to try to press me uh, into your box. Uh, I want you uh, to press out of your box and press into whatever I have for you. For God is saying, I'm too strong for your little box. I'm too big for your little box. My power cannot be contained in your little box. For my ways are not your ways. My faults are not your faults. For as high uh, as the heavens uh, are above the earth, uh, so are my ways uh, above your ways uh, and my faults uh, above your faults. Uh, whatever uh, you have uh, in your little box, uh, God's got something better. Uh, whatever uh, you have uh, in your little box, uh, God's got something bigger. For I heard uh, if he and say now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us get ready for the above blessing get ready for the above miracle Get ready uh, to leave uh, your little box uh, and press into uh, what God uh, has for 
for you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's press out of our box. Let's press out of our box. Let's press into the face of God. Let's press into the will of God. Somebody press. God's not kidding. In your little box, how long are you going to cry? Because things didn't work out in your little box. In your little box, you were married by now. In your little box, you were making more money. In your little box, your children turned out different. But isn't it time for you to consider that this cannot be my ending? So it must be a new beginning. And starting today, I'm pressing into what God has. I'm not going to tell God how to bless me. I'm not going to tell God how to fix it. I've been doing my own thing all my life. But I'm going to stop right now and say, God, have your way. Come on, tell them, 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 have your way. Press into his presence. Press until he breaks your fire. Press until he changes your plans. Press until he wins. Because if you lose, he wins. If I lose, he wins. If I decrease, he can increase. Somebody show glory. Ah, hey. Pressing into the present. So I have one more point. And I'm getting ready to get out of your way so that we can pray and press into what God has. So Jacob wrestled in the wrong way. But the Bible still says that God blessed Jacob. And he told him, you are a prince because you have wrestled with God and man. And you have prevailed. So what we have to know tonight is that even though we won't wrestle, just like Jacob, we still have to wrestle. For the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world. So since most of us women probably don't know very much about wrestling, God has sent me tonight to give you a few techniques, a few techniques about wrestling. Is that all right? Um, the first thing um, in wrestling, uh, the first technique uh, is you have to know uh, how to stand. Uh, because the whole point of wrestling uh, is for someone else, uh, your opponent, uh, to overtake you uh, and pin you down. Uh, so you cannot uh, be light on your feet, uh, but you have to uh, stand firm uh, with your feet uh, firmly planted. Um, you need to stand firm in your faith in God. You need to stand firm in one church. You can't do all this church hopping. You're going to get knocked over. Stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. You need to terminate some relationships, some things in your past. Let it go. Counsel it. Deal with it no more so that you can stand firm. So you have to stand firm. And the second thing is that you have to know how to fall. And wrestling is not unusual for anybody to fall. If you've ever watched a wrestling match, people are picking each other up and throwing each other down. And wrestling is nothing unusual to lay flat on your back. It's nothing unusual to be flat on your face. So you've got to know how to fall. And the main thing you got to know about falling is that if you fall, get back up again. For the Bible says that a just man falls seven times 
times, but he rises up again. You can't be demoralized because you fail. You can't cry six months because you fail. Shake yourself off. Reposition your hair. Fix your nails and get on up and fight again. So you have to know how to stand. You have to know how to fall and you have to know how to take the enemy down. We take the enemy down by casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Satan can't stand a person who knows their word. Satan can't stand a person who pokes holes in his arguments. That's why we have to preach the word because Satan don't mind your jump. Satan don't mind your shout as long as he can talk the hole in your head after you get home. But you have to take the enemy down by knowing the word of God. Are you with me tonight? So you got to know how to stand, know how to fall, know how to take the enemy down. And lastly, you have to know how to escape in wrestling when somebody knocks you down they will pin you down and if they pin you down for long enough they will win the match well in studying the techniques of how to escape the pin down what they teach you is you have to shift your hips dig your hands dig your foot and lift up your head the only way to get out of a pin down is to lift up your heads and I hear the word say lift up your heads oh ye gates and be ye lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory he's the lord strong and mighty he's the lord mighty in battle lift up your hands I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help oh my help comes from the Lord depression can't hold me cause my hands are up situations can't pin me down cause my hands are up my plan A failed and my plan B failed but my hands are up why does uh, lifting your hands uh, help you to escape? Because the pin down uh, is designed uh, to demoralize you. Uh, the pin down uh, is designed uh, to make you panic. Uh, the pin down uh, is designed uh, to make you give up. Uh, the pin down uh, is designed uh, to make you feel forgotten. Uh, but when you lift your hand, you show the devil uh, you don't have my joy. You don't have my joy. Got my car, but you can't get my joy. Got my house, but you can't get my joy. Oh! I dare somebody in here lift up your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. When your hands are up, the devil can't hold you down. When your hands are up, you can escape. Come on, lift your hands. Glory to God. Come on, somebody is fighting in the spirit. Somebody is fighting in the spirit. Somebody is fighting in the spirit. Somebody, their house is not flooded, but their mind is flooded. Sister, lift your hands. 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 Fight depression. Break out of that pit. Break out of that struggle. Break out of unforgiveness. Forgive them. Forgive yourself. Move on and lift your hands. Hey, I'm not a shot. Yeah, 
Yes, 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 Hallelujah. Lift your hands uh, like a bird that's escaped uh, out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Hallelujah. Eh, glory to God. So we have to wrestle. But when we wrestle, let us wrestle. Let us struggle to get in God's face. It's not that we shouldn't ask for things because we know that the word tells us that we should. We know that the word tells us that God gives us the desires of our hearts. But you know, in giving us the desires of our hearts, God gives us what to desire. Romans gives us to know, Romans chapter 8, gives us to know that we don't know how to pray as we ought. So the Spirit makes intercession with moans and groans that cannot be uttered. Some of our prayers are not answered because the Holy Ghost said, mm, 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 mm. Because the Holy Ghost prays according to the will of God. We pray according to what we know and our will. But the Holy Ghost prays according to the will of God. Are there any people here tonight who would dare just for this week to say, God, I'm going to press in your face. God, I'm going to press for your blessing. And when I get in your face, God, change my desires so that I can want what you want. Uh, so I can want what you want. Hallelujah. Come on, if that's you tonight, meet us at the altar. We're going to pray and we're going home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come like you're pressing. Come like you want to get in his face. Come with the desperation that I will not let go until you bless me. Come with the desperation. That I don't know what to ask you for. But I just need you. Hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus. More are coming, more are coming. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God of the Bible. Great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, we gather in your house tonight. Oh God, and we seek your face. You said that if we seek you, we would find you. After we seek you with all of our hearts. And oh God, we come to you tonight. We surrender our will at your feet. We surrender our will at your feet. God, we ask you tonight to help us discover the blessing of the Lord. God, we put aside our agenda. God, we know that you know we have needs. But God, we submit to your will uh, and we ask you to fix it uh, in the way that you see fit. Um, we ask you, oh God, um, to have your way um, in our lives. Uh, God, we don't take that request lightly. We ask you to have your way um, in our families. Uh, have your way um, in our churches. Uh, have your way uh, in our bodies. Uh, have your way. Uh, in our minds have your way in our relationships let the blood of jesus cover every area of our lives god we say humbly that if you don't want it we don't want it if it's not in your will if it's not in your purpose we let it go in the name of jesus we ask that your kingdom come we ask that your kingdom come we ask that your kingdom come. We ask that your will be done. Come on, say it. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. God, we press out of our boxes and we press into what you have for us. We're finally ready to press into your will. You've been telling us to do some things uh, for a long time uh, and right now God uh, we give you a yes God uh, 
right now God we give you a yes yes Lord come on say 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 it till you mean it say it till you mean it come on clap your hands and say yes come on clap your hands and say yes come on clap your hands and say yes yes Lord yes in my mind Yes in my body, yes God, have your way in me. You can have your way in me. You can have your way in me. You can have.